Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple, he's on Twitter today, as he is often on many days. And this tweet was perfect timing because it is uh, something that I wanted to communicate in this video, and that's about liquidity. About five hours ago, this is the tweet he put out. I believe the entire cryptocurrency industry is built around the promise of what the technology could do in the future. I think we've executed, we meaning Ripple, far more than most given that among other things, we actually have financial institutions using a digital asset as a liquidity tool. All right, so the reason why I chose to do my video today is that I don't think it's quite understood that XRP being a liquidity tool is not the answer to every liquidity problem out there. And when we talk about banking, there's a lot of talk about liquidity in the news with banking. I'm hearing a narrative that XRP is that answer for everything. And I want to give you four examples of liquidity. And really only one of them is what XRP was, to, was designed to do. Now, Follow me here. Now, I won't, I won't go into great detail. We're going to just kind of jump across the lily pads on a lake to give you the basic concept. We have banks. Banks want to lend money. In order to lend money, they often want collateral. Collateral is something that they can take from that borrower if that person defaults on their agreement, you know, if they can't pay it back, they want to be able to take something in exchange for that money that they gave. So lending is collateral based for the most part. So you want to keep that in mind. And the collateral the banks want is often safe and high quality. And right now that's difficult because things are not that safe and the quality is actually uh, has gone down as of late. All right, so currently there is a lot of debt, corporate debt. Just in the US alone, we've got about 10 trillion US dollars in debt. And this corporate debt was about $10 trillion just right before the last global financial crisis in 2008. So what exactly is that corporate debt? Well, it's often companies that dip into their credit lines, for example. They'll do that to expand their business. They want to either buy inventory, they want to modernize their equipment, uh, maybe it's just some expansion plan. And with the low interest rates, they have been enticed to borrow recklessly. And those piles of debt, then they create financial instruments. All right, and that is an instrument that is bought and sold. The impact of the global crisis for companies is going to no doubt cause a lot of defaults. And the default occurs when those companies have the inability to pay back on their credit lines. So even if they are paying late, it causes a huge problem. So the last couple of days, you have seen articles like this that you see on CNBC where corporate debt downgrades and defaults are seen as inevitable following the stock market's steep slide. In the background, companies are trying to refinance their debt and they do that often to avoid bankruptcy. Okay, but liquidity, here is the first example. The liquidity, the capital lending freezes. This is one example of a liquidity crisis. And if companies can't restructure, it's very bad. It has a domino effect. But XRP, the digital asset, is not really the type of liquidity needed for this situation. Now I want to talk about liquidity in the treasury market. That has really been in the news lately. The US Treasury sells the national debt. They've done so since the Revolutionary War. The first 
Treasury bill was created in 1929. And the bill is a short-term investment maturing in one year or less. Just keep also in mind that there are treasury bills and there's treasury notes. Notes have different maturity dates, just so you know. They are more like two, three, five, seven, ten year maturity dates and, and on up. The New York Fed, which conducts operations on behalf of the U.S. Central Bank, said that it aims to provide trillions of dollars in temporary loans to relieve the strains of sellers because liquidity is evaporating. In this particular instance of liquidity, they mean that it's getting harder and harder to sell because with all the recent, I mean, to buy, with all, well, it's, it's getting harder and harder to sell because there aren't enough buyers. There is panic selling going on. Nobody wants to buy, especially these low yield treasury bills uh, as the expression goes, nobody wants to catch a falling knife. So global investors have become desperate to sell and to try to stabilize the market. The Fed actually injected 1.5 trillion in capital just a day ago. And this was mostly to calm down the treasury bill liquidity issues. Okay. Again, you hear the word. But this isn't something that XRP, the digital asset, really is able to be used in order to solve. It's all becoming quite shocking in the amount of operations with the um, updated article I can show you here. Just a few hours ago, it looks like this. So they did 4 billion in each 20 to 30 year purchase from 1030 to 1045 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is all on Friday. Then there was the purchase of about 5 billion in the 7 to 20 year space from the time frame of 1115 to 1130 Eastern Standard Time. And then they took 8 billion in the 4.5 to 7 year sector from 12.45 to 1 p.m. And then 8 billion was spent in the zero to two and a half year sector from 1.30 p.m. to 1.45 p.m. It's getting a little crazy because in addition to the 1.5 trillion for trying to make it more liquid in this market, they also are taking 500 billion in the three month and 500 billion in the one month repurchase agreements. And that is sometimes referred to as the repo market. Those are usually overnight loans or occasionally they can go up to one week for banks. And this is the purpose of keeping the plumbing going for the banks, liquidity and operations in order. So what is happening is that the Fed is artificially propping up the market. Government debt is exploding. Corporate debt is exploding. This is why there is so much narrative about everything imploding. All right. The type of liquidity needed in these three examples is not really what XRP is designed to do. XRP eliminates pre-funding in international payments for those banks around the world that have correspondent banking partners. When you have to pre-fund, it is expensive, it's risky, and it's costly to manage. So XRP frees up that capital for banks and payments, payment providers like MoneyGram, for example, to make them more lean, mean, and competitive. And it provides them 40 to 60% cost savings. That's the power of XRP on-demand liquidity. So I just wanted to give a little bit of clarification because I hear a lot of people just hearing the word liquidity and then they think that that's 
what XRP is going to do. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, more involved than that. I hope that helps. I'm going to jump to the fluff. For just one month, there is a restaurant 50, 52 stories high in Tokyo, in, in Roppongi, where you can eat a traditional suite made from a 3D printer. The restaurant is called Moon, and the suite is called Cyber Wagashi. And it's formed by using weather data. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. The shape and the color depends on the day's wind speed, the atmospheric pressure, the temperature, and other weather data. So you can order the hottest day in the last hundred years, or you can order the coldest day in history, or maybe you want to order a piece of wagashi from the day that the super typhoon 80 years ago moved through Japan. I think the most interesting is you can order the day that mankind first stepped on the moon. And also you can order one that represents the weather when the first airplane flew over the skies of Tokyo. Really funny, isn't it? So this is some of the examples of what that looks like. The color again is the temperature and then you're seeing the shape of the wind speed. It's all just, yeah, future creative food for sure. The company behind this concept is called Open Meals and they're aiming to revolutionize food by digitizing all kinds of food. They call it the fifth food revolution. And they're going to open a place called Sushi Singularity in Tokyo very soon. Uh, they actually gave the concept uh, a preview at South by Southwest last year. Everything on the menu is produced by a 3D, 3D printer. And the craziest thing about it is they want you, after you have made a reservation, they want to take your biological samples, your saliva and your urine, so that they can create the perfect sushi for your nutritional requirements. This is what the kit looks like. And you send them back your, your, um, <laughs> your, your samples, and then they create your bio data after it's analyzed. I know, it's just crazy. And this is what the sushi from the 3D printer will look like. I don't know what all of them are. I can tell you that this is eel. The white castle is squid. Uh, this is octopus. I don't know what the shape is supposed to represent. Maybe a parking garage? <laughs> don't know. And this lattice work is tuna so wild don't you think just wild wild tokyo is wild sometimes all right everybody do take care sign for now bye bye